<sighs> the Japanese make some banger products, let me tell you. So, here's the thing. When I was first starting, when I was first learning on a fast 201, I'd always heard that Japanese yo-yos were the premium go-to, like, they were just, they were the hotness back then. So 2015 and 2016, those are the years that the drop near was at the height of its popularity. So it only makes sense that at that time I would constantly hear that Japanese yo-yos were the way to go. So, I don't know, I think it's kind of weird because I never really got all that into Japanese yo-yos. It took me a while to really get bit by the bug. It took me a long time actually, it only happened recently. I was always hung up on COYW and OneDrop and Yo-Yo Factory and American companies, yeah, because it's us Americans. And us Americans have kind of awful opinions when it comes to yo-yoing, I'll be honest. We are terrible. We, mmm. We perpetuate a lot of bad design concepts, we keep things alive that ought not to be alive, and some... Ugh, the opinions and takes of some of my fellow Americans, I... Oh, it's bad. I hate... I genuinely cannot believe that some people have the opinions that they do. It, only in America will you see someone get something like a drop near, or a flashback, or a hummingbird, and go, Oh yeah, man. Doesn't got a soul. Yo yo doesn't have a soul. That's dumb. <laughs> and you know, with that, you'll hear a lot of American players also explain that because it doesn't have a soul or that it's too objectively good, that it's not a fun yo yo. And for a long time, I also kind of had that thinking. Like, I, I agreed and I thought that same way. Like, oh yeah, if it's too objectively good, then it's just not fun to play with. And then I met someone. A good friend of mine, a dear friend of mine even. That dear friend of mine, he really opened my eyes. He really explained to me that it's not about it, uh, like the specific category being soulless or unfun. It's that us American players, we just like to dislike what's good. And I say that, and I mean that. Only in America will you hear people say that objectively great yo-yos aren't good because they're not fun. If you want to think that a yo-yo isn't fun because it's just not your flavor, then that's fine. Go ahead, that's perfectly fine. But if you're going to look at something like a surveillance and then compare it to, say, a one-drop sugar glider, and if you have the audacity to say that this sugar glider performs objectively better than that surveillance, I'm going to laugh at your face. Yeah. And I, I can't really say why we don't like good, objectively good yo-yos. That's always the stereotype you always hear. Ah, oh, Japanese yo-yos are always competition yo-yos. They're always uncomfortable in the hand. And it's just not a fun experience because they're too good. And it's like, uh, the feeling in the hand, if you're playing with your yo-yo, it should be spending 90% of its life spinning on the string and not in your hand. So, as you can probably notice with every yo-yo that you're looking at right now, this is a collection of yo-yo recreation, turning point, mowl, and then I have hydrangea down here. I can't own every single one. The big ones I'm missing are yo-yos from something, which are the who manufacture the Anglam, and Sengoku, who are famous for the Samurai, and recently the Shinobi. Obviously, I just can't own every single Japanese yo-yo. Because it's, it's expensive, because they're good yo-yos. They're These yo-yos are all, like, over $50. And they're all bangers. And I feel like there's a lot of factors in each of these yo-yos that you see in other Japanese yo-yos. You know, if I were to pick up one of these, I could point at other yo-yos on this table, and I could even put pictures up of other Japanese yo-yos that have similar designs, like big, thick rims. I can tell you other yo-yos that have these big, thick rims that are from Japan. I can point on this table. You know, you have the St. Elmo, you have the Optima, and a lot of Japanese yo-yos are known for their rim weight, which, I mean, look at how narrow it is, like, on the profile, right? Look how narrow this is on the profile, but then look at how thick this rim is. That's steel. 
Oh, my bearing remover. Okay. Like, look at look at this Hinamosu. Look how thick these rims are. And then, like, also how thick they are here. Like, the Japanese don't mess around with their rim weight. They really don't. Like, every yo-yo you see here has a lot of rim weight. Except for the Gotham, which is a special yo-yo. But, just, you know... There are other famous Japanese yo-yos, you know, I have a couple on my desk right now, you know, the Saint Elmo, the Hinamosu, but there's the Drop Near, there's the Slape Near, there's the Anglam, you know, these are all mainstay, like, names in the yo-yoing community, these are big names that I'm dropping, these aren't little, like, fringe names, you know, Japanese companies make some of the best competition yo-yos. You know, their unifying factors are generally, you know, a lot of rim weight. They tend to be very good in competition. They rarely have a lot of center weight. You see with their profiles sometimes, their profiles tend to be kind of extreme. You know, you have, you have the surveillance here, which is just a very sheer, very sharp, very clinical H shape. And then you have, you know, the invaders must die as well with that V shape. These common characteristics really do make for exceptional yo-yos. And it makes sense because a lot of these yo-yos will be used at competitions and just destroy competitions. With this video, I really wanted to make a love letter to these Japanese yo-yos. So I also wanted to make a little collage like boom, 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 just rattling out like a bunch of things. Just a quick overview review as well. That's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go play with each of these. So overview, let's go. I'm back, and I have played with all of these and talk about what makes them good, what they're good for, and maybe what they're not so great at. So really just talk about how they how they play, you know, like I want to be able to tell you, you know, if you're considering buying any of these, like how they are. So we're going to go top left to bottom right. We're going to start off with the Mal Surveillance. So the Surveillance is particularly powerful. It's not, it's not... It doesn't lend itself immediately to very fast speed. It doesn't have a very uh, fast acceleration curve. So the surveillance, it can handle the speed, but maybe it can't really handle a, a super sheer acceleration curve. But the, the big thing with the surveillance is it has a real emphasis on control and power. Let's talk about like maybe why it probably plays like that. So. You can see it has this very extreme design where almost all of the weight is in these really thick, kind of narrow rims. It's a very densely packed design. I'll pull up the specs right now anyways. But this design is honestly a little bit deceptive. I feel like compared to other yo-yos that have this sort of design and look and feel, it plays a little bit more reluctant than you would expect. There you go. That's just how I feel it plays and maybe why I feel it plays that way. Uh, the surveillance, it is, I'm not aware of what the gap width is. I'll put that up on screen. As of now, I believe I'm running normal thickness string, but I have used it with thick string and it has partic it has, it has kind of tight binds with those. So maybe I just haven't broken it in enough. I'm not sure, but it's, it's kind of tight with the binds there on normal and fat string. But moving on to the Hinamosu. Now the Hinamosu is a monster with these rims and if there were ever a yo-yo that could tell you exactly how it played with the look if you looked at this and the first thing you thought was wow that looks powerful you would be dead right it is so powerful it's not you you really feel the rim weight with this it's such a rim weighted yo-yo it just smacks the palm of your hand every time you bind it and it's such a satisfying thwack and it's not a particularly speedy yo-yo you know you're not going to have a lot of speed in this but it's not it's not super reluctant it's it's it is reluctant but it's not super reluctant so the hinamosu in play it feels kind of light but then you'll play it with other yo-yos and you'll be like, oh wow, suddenly this other yo-yo that isn't the Hinamosu feels a little bit lighter. But the big thing with the Hinamosu is it's got spin time for days. 
and normally this wouldn't be something to talk about because it's a yo-yo with a sea bearing and they spin for a long time anyways, but the Hinamosu in particular just goes and goes and goes for days. It doesn't stop spinning. Now, the Hinamosu, it's got a little response bump and it's got a 4.8 millimeter response gap. So if you're gonna get a Hinamosu, I highly advise getting thick string. You're really not gonna be hitting a lot of those flashy binds if you're not using thick string. Now, the invaders must die. This yo-yo is, it's got these extremely narrow rims. It's got that sheer V shape and it's just, it's something interesting, right? It's a very anemic kind of yo-yo, I would say, in look and in play. It's not, so it's extremely fast. It's an extremely fast yo-yo, but it just, it's hard to control. The presence that the Invaders Must Die has on the string, it just isn't really there. So you really lose that control of like, oh, I know where the yo-yo is, I know, where like I know what I'm doing with it you really lose that control on it and it's also a little sensitive it lends itself to a very extreme acceleration curve but it almost can't handle it very well it burns out kind of quick sometimes so moving forward we have the Optima now the Optima when I talked about how Japanese yo-yos tend to be objectively good, the Optima is the star example of that objective goodness. It's super fast. It's super powerful. Oh, you can tell that I'm a little bit of a, at a loss for words, but you can tell why. It's got that classic V shape. It's got these big thick rims. And something that you might not be able to see on camera is there's actually these rims go deep in. So what they do is they go deep in and then they cut back in. So I, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but you have a lot, you have a very rim weighted yo-yo. Now, this rim weighted yo-yo, you can tell that it's rim weighted and because it's super fast, it's super powerful and it, it, it is kind of hard to control. And that's probably about it. It's also a little sharp on the catch though, and th that's kind of standard. Uh, if I were to say you might want to run normal sized, it's a little bit snaggy on thick sized string. And from what I believe, it has a 4.45 millimeter gap width. Now moving forward is the St. Elmo. Now my St. Elmo has seen better days. I sent it to an engraver and the engraver scuffed it. <sighs> and it's, it doesn't look good anymore. But the St. Elmo is a very interesting yo-yo because in play, it doesn't feel particularly heavy. And from what I understand, it has kind of an average weight and this sort of yo-yo, it's kind of... So the St. Elmo in play is an, a very interesting yo-yo because it plays with the power of a much heavier, much more rim-weighted yo-yo, I'll be honest. It doesn't do the thing where that makes it difficult to accelerate. It's not reluctant in the same way that he, the Hinamosu is, just to compare these two, because this is the bimetal version of the St. Elmo, but it's not reluctant. It doesn't lend itself to an extreme acceleration curve. It's not extremely fast, but it has that average speed, and it also has above average spin time. This is something I noted. The Hinamosu has that double-double spin time. The St. Elmo just has that little bit extra oomph with the spin time. And other than that, you know, it's kind of got these thicker rims. They're not super thick rims, but they're decently thick compared to the rest of the body. It feels lighter on the string than you would probably feel like it should weigh on the string. So something with the St. Elmo is I believe it has a 4.8 millimeter response gap so you're gonna want to run thick string on it it has very nice binds on thick string specifically so the saint elmo has a really big emphasis on tech and power and for a monomoto yo-yo with that isn't particularly overly heavy that's actually a pretty big deal so moving forward 
we have the Gotham. Now, if you looked at the Gotham, you would probably guess that it's a fairly average yo-yo. It's got this kind of average profile. You see this a lot where it just kind of goes out and then it does this really soft curve. And this cup, you don't really have a whole lot of rim weight and it's just there isn't a whole lot to the Gotham's design that would lend it to be super interesting. And that's where you'd be wrong. It's still fast. It's still a fast playing yo-yo, but it's not so fast that you lose control. It's very much struck that balance of being really fast, but still having that little that control that lets you really feel it. So the Gotham string gap or uh, gap width, sorry, is kind of similar to the Optima. I advise running normal string, but if you prefer thick string, it probably won't be too bad. When I first got the Gotham in, it was a little snaggy, I'll be honest, but it's kind of broken in now, so it's not as bad. But the, the Gotham really lends itself, you know, if you're kind of diving in and you don't want to get a really extreme Japanese yo-yo, you just want to get something that's kind of what you're used to, just you get that little, that taste of Japanese, then definitely get the Gotham. It's not extreme in any way. It is a little bit average but it's super controllable and it does lend itself to playing kind of fast. So there you go, there, there's, there's the Gotham. Now, finally, probably the most special yo-yo, the, the most unique yo-yo on this whole congregate of Japanese yo-yos, and that's the Magnolia. This is the Hydrangea Magnolia. It's made out of a special aluminum. I can't remember what it is, but it's like a string of numbers and letters. It's basically like a Sony headphone. You, I couldn't tell you what the aluminum is, but the Magnolia has a super interesting feeling that you could fool someone. When you, you pick it up, it feels like nothing in the hand. Like everything, the invaders must die, feels more dense and heavy. It just, it feels really deceptively light when you hold it in your hand as I like just like I am right now it feels really deceptively light it is a mono metal there this isn't like some secret by metal somewhere it's just a very interesting design and these rims are kind of thick too and it's just got that it's it's a super unique interesting yo-yo I'm currently running alpha line on it alpha line leans itself in a slightly thicker stringed territory and let me tell you the binds on this have always been perfect I don't know what, maybe it's just because I have my own like silicone pad in there that I hand siliconed, but it's just a perfect bind every time. But then you play with it and it's a super interesting yo-yo. This yo-yo is super interesting. So when you play with it, you go, oh, wow, that's kind of heavy. Not bricky heavy. You really feel it on the string. The Invaders Must Die had the issue of lacking presence on the string. The Magnolia, you feel it. It has that presence. Now, in play, it's it's not super heavy, but when you play with it and you go fast with it, it's not super reluctant. The Surveillance and the Hinamosu were more reluctant than it was. It doesn't really emphasize anything, but for how much of a presence it has on the string, I think it will surprise the user with how fast it can play. You know, maybe the Magnolia, maybe hold off on paying full price for that. This is $150. So if you can find a Magnolia for less than MSRP, or you can land it in a trade, then I say just go for it. And that goes for everything here. Unless you don't like progress and objectively good things, then you won't like any of these. Because these are all objectively great yo-yos. And that's where I'm going to end this off here. Thank you for watching. I probably alienated a couple people in this video with my hot takes, but I really don't care. Uh, see y'all next time. Hope you guys enjoyed. I kind of threw in some tricks in this one. So, bye-bye.